Okay, so now let us see a very classical attack called man in the middle attack uh, that is used uh, or that has been done in the earlier days uh, uh, and uh, motivated uh, the ideas uh, idea for developing what is called a public key certificate for each user. Okay, so the kind of idea uh, behind the attack is this. So there, is, there are two genuine users, say Alice and Bob, who want to communicate, uh, but Alice, say, does not know the public key of Bob. So she will ask Bob to send his public key. So uh, again, why Alice is asking the pub public key of Bob? Because uh, once she gets the public key of Bob, she can encrypt a message with the public key of Bob and send it to Bob. So Bob can only decrypt with his private key and nobody else can see what the message is. So this can provide confidentiality. So that's the reason Alice is asking Bob to send his public key. Now Bob is sending his public key on the channel and an attacker called Mallory, so Mallory is a bad person, uh, she will decrypt, uh, she will get the public key of Bob because the public key of Bob is sent as it is. Uh, so she'll be able to get it in, uh, and then uh, she won't forward the message, she won't forward the public key of Bob to Alice. She will instead send her own public key to Mallory, uh, uh, her own public key to Alice. So what Alice will get is Mallory's public key, but Alice doesn't know that what she's getting is uh, not Bob's public key. Alice will think what she's getting is Bob's public key. So Mallory can do IP spoofing and make the message to appear to come from Bob. So Alice sees the IP address, comes from Bob, belongs to Bob. So Mal Alice also thinks the public key she gets also belongs to Bob. But actually the public key she gets belongs to Mallory. So what Alice will then do is, will uh, start sending actual data, so she'll encrypt the data with what she thinks as the public key of Bob, but it actually belongs to Mallory. So when the message is again, uh, the, when the encrypted message is being sent, uh, Mallory can again uh, capture the message and decrypt that with her own private key because it was encrypted with the public key of Mallory. So then Mallory can do several things here. She can um, change the message or at least look at what the message is. So the confidentiality is of course lost. And by changing the message, the integrity could also be lost. And so whatever is done, the Mallory will encrypt the message with the public key of Bob and send it to Bob. Of course, all is done with IP spoofing, so either end, doesn't see that Mallory is actually sending. Uh, Mallory will do IP spoofing and make the message to appear to come from Alice uh, from the point of view of Bob. Similarly, from the point of view of Alice, the message will appear to come from Bob. So Bob thinks that the message is coming from Alice and so he will use his private key to decrypt the message and will process the message whatever is sent. So Mallory could have really some malicious content in the message and say some virus code or something. So Bob could process that code and uh, his system could be, uh, could be affected because of that. Or it could be some wrong information that was encrypted by Mallory and sent. So Bob could believe that message really came from Alice and process accordingly. So this is called a man in the middle attack. Like Mallory is the man in the middle uh, who is able to successfully do this. Uh, uh, using IP spoofing and uh, make the end users think that the message what they are using is actually the public key of the other user. So Alice is thinking what she uses is the public key of Bob and Bob thinks that the message was really encrypted with the uh, public key of Bob so he uses it, decrypt, he's decrypting with the private key of Bob and processing the message. So this is the attack. So uh, the problem with this, why this attack could happen is Alice is made to believe or Alice is thinking that what she gets is a public key of Bob because Bob, she thinks it is coming from Bob so that means it's Bob's public key. So there is no way for Alice to really authenticate that what she gets is really the public key of Bob. So that's the problem here. So 
that this is similar to like uh, you know when you send some documentation to some processing authority uh, they would require you to kind of get the message notarized right so uh, what you do to get the notarization you take your original documents along with say the photocopy that you really wanted to send to the other side uh, show that notarizing official the original along with the photocopy they will verify it is actually yours and they will then notarize the photocopy and uh, they will and then you can send it to the other side so when that uh, notarizing official notarizes that photocopy they are really taking the responsibility so if something uh, wrong happens in the sense that if the receiver finds out that this is not the original copy of the actual sender then the notarizing official also has to take responsibility for that so they are doing something called vouching uh, that is they are kind of uh, um, uh, supporting the sender that uh, they really uh, verified it and uh, it's, their, it's their document. So there's an issue of trust here in the sense that if the receiver sees that the document has been signed by notarizing official, they will accept it as a genuine document and process it. So that means receiver is trusting that notarizing official. Right? So all these things we do for sending documentation day-to-day -day activities. So the same idea is now used to generate what is called the public key certificate. So there is a digital notary uh, it's called the certifying authority uh, who will be trusted by all the users out there. So each network can have a certifying authority and if the, if the communication is between two different networks you can have a chain of certifying authorities who trust each other and so on. So basically we can assume the users trust the certifying authority. So the idea is this, uh, so you will for a public key you will generate what is called the public key certificate, a digital certificate of the public key. Uh, so what will be part of that public key certificate? So this is the actual public key you generate you have for say user A. So it could include the name of the user, the ID of the user, it could be also the IP address also, even computers or host machines could also have the public key certificate. So in the case of machines, you could have the IP address of the machine also here. And you compute the hash value of all this information. So as I said earlier, the hash value is mainly used for integrity purposes. So if anything in this information is changing, then the corresponding the hash value will not match with the change information. So this is say the original information. So you compute the hash value of that. And this whole thing is encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority. So the private key of the certifying authority should be known only to the certifying authority. Nobody else should know the private key of the certifying authority. So it is like the signature for the uh, notarizing official. So that's called the digital signature. Uh, so nobody else should be able to generate that signature. Okay. So uh, this is what is called the public key certificate of a user. That is nothing but the public key of the user encrypted with the private key of the certifying authority. So that's what is the public key certificate of a user. So now how can the uh, uh, receiver made to believe that the message really what they, uh, that uh, the message it gets is the public key of the intended sender. So that's what we are going to see now. So when a sender say A uh, is sending a message to user B the sender could send his pri his public key certificate along with the message. Okay, let us see how this could be done. So you, you have the message that you really want to send. So this is similar to the idea we saw earlier uh, that you send the message along with its encrypted hash value. So that will provide integrity and authentication. If you remember the first technique that we saw. So you send the message along with this inter. Uh, encrypted hash value and you encrypt uh, that with the private key of the sender so that uh, the private key of the sender is known only to the sender. So that provides the authentication. Okay, So that's the idea here. So the message 
along with it and then you have the hash value of the message so you encrypt the hash value of the message with the private key of a so that's the sender so that's where you have the message concatenated along with its encrypted hash value and now you attach along with this the public key certificate of a the sender and encrypt the whole thing with the public key of the receiver b okay so uh, the message along with its encrypted hash value and with the public key certificate of the user the whole thing is encrypted with the public key of the use uh, receiver so why it's encrypted the public key of the receiver because only the receiver will now be able to decrypt with its private key so once the receiver decrypts the message with its private key the receiver needs to process this portion now especially the encrypted uh, hash value so for to do that decryption the receiver needs to know the public key of user a right so so far i said everyone knows the public key of a user so b could know the public key of the user a sender a like how alice got it but you don't want to right away use the public key of the user that comes along this channel you want to extract the public key of the sender from the public key certificate so before so in order for the receiver b to process uh, this encrypted hash value of the message the receiver needs to extract the public key of a from the public key certificate so the receiver will decrypt the public key certificate by using the public key of the certifying authority so again uh, everyone trusts the certifying authority here so uh, whatever is the public key or certifying certi uh, authority that the receiver is using that's the original or the actual public key of the certifying authority so using that decryption uh, the receiver b will be able to get the public key of a and then use that public key of a to decrypt this portion and get the hash value of the message and then of course you could again compute the hash value of the message at the receiver side and compare the two hash values so that way you can make sure there's integrity and authentication is provided because you are decrypting with the public key of that user a and whose private key was used to do this encryption so that provides you authentication and there's confidentiality of the message because the whole thing is encrypted the public key of b so only b can do the decryption with this private key so confidentiality is also guaranteed here so all the three confidentiality integrity and authentication are guaranteed here so there are various versions of uh, this digital generating this public key certificate the digital certificate so the latest version uh, just for information is x.509 uh, uh, is version 3 Okay, so this is a standard x.509 standard that is used to generate the public key certificate and the latest version is uh, version 3 okay now any question on public key certificate that's a very important topic okay so let me quickly save this video